Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. When I was doing the IoT thingy video, I ran into this sensor, which is basically a cheap Arduino sensor that measures humidity and temperature. And I started digging a little bit into its library, looking for places where I could potentially contribute. Contributing to open source is always nice, fun, and it's good for your CV, you can always say that you're an open source contributor to something like Adafruit, I think that's cool. Additionally, the original repository has only 19 stars, so for example if you'd want to contribute to the Linux kernel, that would be extremely difficult because there's already 1 million people trying to do that. Here it's not too crowded, you can see last activity was two years ago. I started by forking this repository and I have an idea of what I want to implement. I opened an issue and said hello. I just wanted to ask if it would be useful if I implemented a sample mode measurement function. It would read values over a certain period of time and return the average. Optionally it could ignore outliers. Open to hearing any thoughts. Sure a pull request is welcome. So that's like a green light for me to implement the function I want to do. And maybe I should explain what I mean by sample mode measurements. If you look into the code a little bit, you can see the measurement functions, for example, the read humidity function here. It performs one measurement and returns the value. My idea was to make multiple measurements. And if you're a little bit aware of how statistics works, the more measurements you do, the better, right? Because you can average them out and this way you eliminate random errors. Or maybe not eliminate, but decrease their impact on the final number you get. So in order to reduce the impact of random errors, you can just take an average of multiple measurements instead of doing just one. So that's my idea. I don't know if that's smart, but I think it would be kind of useful. And you know, it doesn't harm anyone. if someone doesn't want that function, they can just stop using it. It's not like it's a problem for someone. I already forked this repository and now it would be time to clone it to my computer so I can make some changes. I put my repositories here. Yes. We basically have a copy now. First, let's uh, check if we can even use this copied library. Here I prepared a basic Arduino sketch that uses the sensor. Let's see it. The most important thing is that it imports the library that I just forked because there is a symlink in the Arduino libraries folder that points to my fork in instead of the default library. I mean it, it says it's installed, right? But it's my fork, it's my version. So here you can see the Arduino CLI thinks that I am using the original library because I tricked it. So here I have a basic circuit with a microcontroller which is a Arduino shell. That's connected over I2C to the sensor. So maybe let's start off by checking if it even works. So I plugged it into my laptop and now I would like to select the port. I think it's this one. I will upload it to the microcontroller. Upload complete, so this means I can open the monitor and it works. That's really nice. And if I blow with my air, so if I just do something like that, it should increase the humidity and the temperature because of my breath. So you can see it's working. Now I would like to add a function to the library just to see, you know, if I can do it. First I would go to the header file. Here we have a simple declaration of the begin function, I see, which we used here. We find a new function here. Read temperature sample mode. Now that I have declared it, let's go to the 
cpp file and let's implement whatever it's not important now maybe let's put it after the temperature function right actually i can just copy this and put it here but change the type and they read temperature sm nice okay so for now i just want to return a value to see if it even works so i'll return 100 actually maybe let's do 10 because there might be some rules for maximum temperature or minimum temperature so let's try to use this now so now let's try to print this and this should print 10 right okay let's see it's uploading okay so now if I check the monitor yep we have a new function in the library that just outputs 10 degrees so now I would like to implement the logic to make multiple measurements over a period of time and return the average so this is my final like idea of how to do this it's really simple it's just essentially a function that calculates the average right and calls the read temperature function so I made this super prompt here this library is for the AM2 to sensor and lets you take single measurements of the temperature or humidity. According to my knowledge, making multiple measurements and taking the average is a good way to reduce the impact of random errors leading to a more precise measurement. So I decided to implement a sample mode measurement function like this in this library. I plan to send a pull request now to make an open source contribution. What do you think? And I upgraded to deep research, so I expect at least some good insights. May take a few minutes. Are you seeking feedback on your code implementation, contribution process, or the idea usefulness of the library? Both code and idea usefulness. I can continue adding details while he does the thing. That's pretty cool. Seven minutes. Okay. A review of averaging add-on for the Adafruit library. The Adafruit AM2 Fritizer library currently offers single shot rates of temperature and humidity. We propose adding a blah 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 helper that averages several successive readings to reduce random error. Below is an in-depth evaluation of the idea, its technical implement implications, code style, and recommended pull request tactics. Uh, I presume my code style is super weak because C++ is not my primary language. Sensor readings often fluctuate because of quantization noise, ADC generator, or ambient disturbance. Since taking multiple samples and computing the arithmetic mean, the classical way to attenuate uncorrelated noise and improve the precision of the final value. However, the AM2320 is own timing and self-heating constraints along with the Arduino library best practices add nuances that should be weighed before merging a blocking averaging routine directly into the core driver. Because the sensor enters a sleep state after each measurement, any attempt to pull faster than half a hertz leads repeated values or CRC errors. This too second restriction is the dominant factor for any oversampling strategy. Why averaging works and where it doesn't. Attenuating random noise. If measurement noise is independent and identically distributed, the variance of the mean decreases with the number of samples. 10 samples trim random error by roughly the square root of 10. Okay, that's cool, assuming it's true. Limits imposed by sensor self-heating. For sensors with built-in heaters or passive warm-up like the AM2320, repeated polling can raise the die temperature biasing readings upward. Since each AM2320 conversion lasts... Okay, we can test this actually. If I just leave the sensor and 
make lots and lots of uh, readings, will it increase the temperature? I'm even going to put it in a jar to reduce airflow, right? So I'll leave that for a couple of minutes and see if it gets warmer. Okay, so this has been running for a couple of minutes, but the sensor is still in the jar and I don't see self-heating. Code review of the proposed implementation. Simple and readable weaknesses. Violates datasheet timing. Okay, so we need to think of something that would prevent a naive user from passing a lower interval. Okay, so in summary, averaging can deliver statistically cleaner readings, but only if I take care of the two seconds, if I keep the thing responsive without using the delay function. Okay, I think this is my final implementation of this function. Now it's non-blocking and it guards for uh, the violation of parameters. And it works like this. Every time it has a ready average measurement, it gives it to you. And that is supposedly better than just waiting for the function to do these measurements because it doesn't stop your entire program. For example, what if you want to make an average measurement for the entire day? Like, you would have to dedicate the entire program for that purpose. I just think I'll push it and I'll see what they say about it. Also, I want to prepare an example because as you can see, they had a basic example uh, to show people how to use the library. And I'll just add a example for the average readings so that the reviewer doesn't have to write their own program and so that the users can just grab this example if they need it. And for now, I am not implementing the humidity average measurement function because first I would like to get my code reviewed by Adafruit and then I will implement the function because they are really similar. So there's no point of potentially wasting my time here. And it's easier to review because it's less lines of code. So let's see their example and let's try to come up with something similar just prints the average temperature every 10 seconds and also I left some comments for people to understand what's going on without having to look inside the library. So these things I'm just going to ignore and I'm going to stage the modifications in the implementation, the header file and the new example. Let's commit added average temperature measurement would be silly if I made a typo in measurement. Measurement. Okay. Now I push. So oh, here is my fork. And we can see the changes here. Open pull request. Thank you for creating a pull request to contribute to Adafruit's GitHub code. Before you open the request, please review the following guidelines and tips to help it be more easily integrated. Describe the scope of your change, what the change does and what parts of the code were modified. This will help us understand any risk of integrating the code. Describe any known limitations of your change. For example, if the change doesn't apply to a support platform of the library, please mention it. Please run any tests for examples that can exercise your modified code. We strive to not break users of the code. I don't get it. Um, and running test examples helps with this process. There is no need to bump or check in on a pull request. It will clutter the discussion of the request. Also, don't be worried if the request is closed or not integrated. Sometimes the priorities of Adafruit's GitHub code education ease of use might not match the priorities of the pull requests. Don't fret, the open source community thrives on forks and GitHub makes it easy to keep your changes in a forked repo. After reviewing the guidelines above, you can delete this text from the pull request. Scope of change. Added a function to measure... Yeah. Okay, I think... Create pull request. Yay. So now they can 
accepted or not accepted. I forgot to put a dot here. So there are no conflicts and some checks are running. Okay, that took quite some time. I thought it would be easier. But I'm not like a C++ professional. So that would be it. I made the pull request and I'll keep you updated if they accept it or not. Let me know if you like this video and see you in the next one. Like, subscribe and comment.